Okay, so I'm here today with uh, esteemed Lance Strait from Ford University, colleague and buddy of mine, and we just watched the video called What is Not Random, which was posted by Veritasium. It's an interesting video, mm-hmm. says very provocative things, but I think we both, I think, wanted to register some concern over the way information was being talked about. Well, more than concern, I am you could, I mean, the video would be perfectly fine if you deleted out all references to information uh, that, that he's making because, you know, for one, it's kind of irrelevant and, you know, I think to some extent to, to what he's trying to argue, but more so he's just got information wrong. Right. So, yeah. I mean, how does information fit into the material world? Like, I think of, you know, two, two things. One is George Bernard Shaw. He says, if I have an apple and you have an apple and we exchange apples, we each still have an apple. But if I have an idea and you have an idea and we exchange ideas, we both now have two ideas. So it doesn't uh, seem uh, like a material <laughs> substance in the same way. Yeah, well, that's like, you know, Goffman saying that information is the one thing that you can steal and nobody knows that you've stolen it, right? Right. Right, it can be left there. So it, in some way, information is, the information that people can deal with is more dealt with in information theory in the human, in humanities as a kind of neg entropy. That is, it gives prediction value by reducing the experienced entropy. Yeah. Well, and I think we go back to Claude Shannon, who was this young master student, and I, I don't recall who, the, who his advisor was, but his advisor says, well, why, you know, he's looking for a way to measure information, you know, in, in a very pragmatic way of, you know, measuring information as electronic signals sent over telephone or, or radio waves, and how do I measure it? And he said, you know, to tie it to entropy. And, and Norbert Wiener comes to the same conclusion, although he may have had it in its um opposite number, um, but, you know, the point is that they both see information, the measurement of information, as related to entropy. And then and there's a distinction between, let's say, information as a phenomenon and the measurement of information, which is a function of entropy. And that's where the, the, this guy mixes the two up and, and thinks that the measurement of information is information, and, and because of that, he concludes that pure chaos can be information when it it cannot function as information. Right. It's information for whom? Huh? I mean, there's always this for whom function. I mean, it's information for whom. So if you take even that bar that they have or that he has on there, for someone like Anthony Wilden, he would say that what you're watching is the rise of function of information being correlated to entropy only because living systems, they increase the entropy around them, sort of exporting it by neg-entropically stabbing it off internally. So as, you know, living systems become more complex and produce information in their goal-seeking, it would just make sense that there would be more entropy exported into their environments. But it's also, you know, the function of information is to reduce entropy. That's right. For, that's for, a, for those organisms. Right. And that's why the measurement of information, you have more information when there's more entropy because you're reducing more entropy. Um, and you can't reduce entropy by a, a, you know, a screen full of static right. or, you know, kind of random sounds or anything right. else. I mean, information has to kind of straddle the line between order and chaos. Well, it, uncertainty reduction. It's a, yeah, right but it, it fits in right there. It's, you know, th- that wonderful phrase, the edge of chaos, you know, and on the edge of chaos, order emerges. Information is the edge, the borderline between chaos and, uh, and order. If you have absolute order, you have stasis, there's no information, but if right. you have absolute chaos, there's no information either. You need, right. it, it, it's that fuzzy area in between where information thrives right. and grows. Right. And no, no, I, I don't disagree with that, but I guess I, I, I want to for, force the issue, and I don't know if everyone, you know, I think it's contentious. People would disagree with it, obviously, but I think from my own perspective, the qualitative definition of information is what we mean when we say meaning. It's an organismal goal seeking, it doesn't have to be human. But it doesn't have to be some sort of organism that's goal-seeking, and then the information is a function of coded variety. So the world, in its unfolding, just has variety, but that variety can be coded as information once you have goals. And 
to say that there is information in a qualitative sense without any organism, it doesn't, it doesn't make sense to me. Like, I don't even know what they mean by information in that sense. Well, I'm willing to go along a little further than you are, but I mean, I, I agree that there is, I, you know, one of the beauties of Shannon's definition of information is its subjectivity, because it's what I need to reduce uncertainty, right? So that's, you know, the old phrase, if it's news to me, if it's news to me, it's information. You may have heard it already, right. and it's not news to you. It's not information. It's the right. same kind of the same principle as why a joke is funny the first time but not the second time. But I, I'm willing to take it a step further and, uh, you know, uh, at, at least, you know, consider the idea that whenever things are organ are become, moving toward negative entropically, that is, moving towards greater order, um, information is what's allowing that to happen. So that if we were to take the initial big bang, right, and we have this sort of chaotic explosion of stuff, and then over time it coalesces and forms the stars and the solar systems, that there is some principle of information at work establishing the regular patterns that things start to fall into. Right. So I'm willing to grant that, which allows for information to exist independently of any or organism, and, and also allows for continuity between that occurring, which is a kind of evolution. Right. You know, information's what makes evolution possible. And then the further evolution to, into life, into um, sort of uh, forms of matter that are self-organizing and self-replicating. Right. No. Okay, I mean, I, I would grant, again, there, there have to be forms of information that are subject to scientific inquiry, that are pre-life, and they deal with, you know, the emergence of stars and things like that. But it does seem like this still gets placed within a kind of context. And maybe the concern that I have is that I don't think there is a scientifically rigorous definition of context. Context may be one of the most difficult concepts, and yet it's integral to the notion of information. Totally agree with you there, and that's where media ecology comes in, as Neil Postman called it, context analysis. That is what media ecology does, right? I mean, that, that's what we're about, and, and, and that's hard, right? I mean, that's why there are so few media ecologists in a way, because it, it's not as easy as content analysis. Right. In a way, doing information, you know, from a science point of view, doing, looking at information independent of context is the same as looking at, um, you know, violence on TV independent of the television medium as context. Right, right. Well, I think on that note, people should check out the Media Ecology Association, learn more about uh, the more, what, the different ways that information is theorized, the different ways that people have tried to tackle this, and sort of open the discussion. Not to say that Veritasium isn't saying important things in there, but... There, there were some problems in there that maybe a larger discussion would really be helpful. Absolutely, absolutely. Media Ecology Association, Google it, you'll find it real easy. Great. Well, thanks for the chat there, Lance. I really Thank appreciate you, it. Thank you, Corey. Always a pleasure. All right.